Red Planet. Wolf came to play with Chip. They made a rocket ship out of a bit of pieces. The rocket ship looked quite good. Wolf and Chip played in the rocket ship. They pretended to be spacemen. The rocket is going to take off, said Wolf. Five, four, three, two. Floppy ran up. He wanted to get in the rocket ship with Wolf and Chip. Go away, Floppy! Called Chip. The rocket is going to take off. Nadim came to play. He had his computer with him, but he liked the look of the rocket ship. He wanted to play in it too. Just then, it began to rain. There's not room for all of us, said Chip. Let's go inside and play with Nadim's computer. They played a game on the computer. It was called Red Planet. They had to land the rocket on the planet. Wolf and Chip crashed the rocket. Nadim didn't. He was good at the game. Suddenly, the magic key began to glow. Chip and Wolf pulled Nadim away from the computer and ran into Bib's room. Come on, called Chip. It's time for an adventure. The magic took them to a rocket ship. It took Floppy too. The rocket looked as if it was about to take off, but the door was open. Nadim wanted to look inside the rocket. Come on, he called. Chip didn't want to go inside. It may not be safe, he said. Why not? Said Nadim, "This is a magic adventure." They went inside the rocket. There was nobody there. Look at this computer," said Nadim. Floppy jumped up and put his paw on a button. Five, four, three, two, one. The rocket began to take off. Up it went and out into space. Oh no! Said Chip, "I don't know where we're going." They began to float about inside the rocket. Nadim found some boots. He put them on. We must put these boots on, he said. They will keep us down on the floor. They went to the window and looked out. They saw a big red planet. We are going to land on that planet, said Nadim. We will soon be there. Nadim made the rocket land. I wouldn't like to do that again, he said. It's a good job Nadim knows about computers, thought Wolf. I wouldn't like to crash here. There was red dust all over the planet. There were red rocks and red mountains. Floppy didn't like the look of it. He began to bark and bark. There are no trees, he thought. They wanted to go outside and look at the planet. They found a space buggy. They looked in the space buggy and found some spacesuits. Let's put these spacesuits on, said Wolf. Then we can go outside. Do you think it will be safe outside? Asked Chip. I don't know, said Wolf. They went out on the planet in the buggy. The buggy bumped over the rocks, and the red dust flew up. I don't like this, thought Floppy. I'm not made for space adventures. Suddenly, the ground cracked and a big hole opened up. Oh, help! said Chip. Wolf and Nadim as the buggy fell into the hole. They fell down and down inside the planet. I don't like this," thought Floppy. "I wanted to go home." They all landed with a bump. The buggy landed with a crash and broke in two. They were inside a big cave. "What a place," said Wolf. "Look at it." Chip looked at the buggy. "It's broken," he said. "It's had it." "How will we get back to the rocket?" 
Floppy began to bark. There were some creatures in the cave. They looked like funny little people. Oh no, said Nadim. Look at them. I hope they like us. The creatures looked at the boys. They climbed on the broken buggy and pulled out a spacesuit. One of them turned a tap on Floppy's spacesuit. Floppy's spacesuit began to fill with air. It got bigger and bigger. Then Floppy began to float. Get Floppy! yelled Chip. Don't let him float away! Wolf asked the creatures how to get out of the cave. They told him that there was no way out. They said that they had never been outside. Wolf had a good idea. He took a spacesuit out and he filled it with air. The spacesuit got bigger and bigger. It began to float up and up. Hold on, called Wolf, and don't let go. The spacesuit floated up out of the cave. We can float back to the rocket, said Chip. What a good idea! I hope it won't go pop, thought Floppy. They floated back to the rocket. Wilf let the air out of the spacesuit and it came down to the ground. Good old Wilf, said Nadim. I don't like floating, thought Floppy. They went inside the rocket and it took off. Nadim turned on the computer and looked at the screen. We'll soon be home, he said. Just then, the magic key began to glow. That's good, thought Floppy. They won't have to land the rocket. Dogs don't like space adventures. The magic took them back home. I like that adventure, said Wolf. He looked at the little spacesuit. So did I, said Nadim. But I'm glad I didn't have to land that rocket again. Lost in the Jungle The next day was Mom's birthday. Chip had a box of chocolates for her. Keeper had made her a monkey at school. Biff didn't know what to get. Biff asked Anina's mom to help her buy a plant. They went into a big greenhouse. The greenhouse was hot, and it was full of plants. What a lot of plants, said Biff. It's like a jungle in here. I don't know which one to buy. In the end, she found one that she liked. I will get this one for mom, she said. The next day was Mom's birthday, and the children gave her their presents. Mom liked them all. Thank you, she said. What a lovely plant, Biff. Dad had a present for Mom. It was a plant. I didn't know Biff had a plant as well, said Dad. I don't mind a bit, said Mom. Anina came to play with Biff and Chip. This is from my mom, she said. Wilma's mom came round with the plants too. Thank you, said mom. I love plants. It's quite like a jungle in here. The children went to play in Biff's room. Anina looked at the little house. Can we have a magic adventure? She asked. We can if the key glows, said Keeper. Just then, the key did begin to glow. The magic took them into a jungle. The jungle was full of plants. It's wonderful, said Biff. Look at that one. It's ten times bigger than the one I gave mom. They saw a monkey up a tree. It jumped up and down on the branch. That monkey looks cross, said Keeper. I don't think it likes us. It looks like you, said Chip. The monkey was angry with the children. He shook the branch. Then he began to throw things at them. We can't stay here, said Biff. Come on. They ran through the jungle, but suddenly Chip stopped. 
Oh no, he said. Look at this. There was a big snake in the way. We can't go this way, said Chip. Come on. They came to a river. There were alligators asleep on the bank. Don't wake them up, said Keeper. They might get angry. They might like you for dinner, said Biff. Suddenly they fell into a big net. It pulled them up in the air. Oh, help, called Anina. We are in a trap. The children were hanging in the net. The net was a trap to catch animals. Help! Help! called the children. Let us down! called Keeper. A man and a lady came out of the trees. They were explorers. Don't worry! said the lady. We will soon get you down. What are you doing in the jungle? asked the man. Are you lost? Yes, said Biff. I think we are. So are we, said the lady. But then we have been lost for years. She showed them a picture. We are looking for this place, she said. It's called a lost city. Nobody lives there. It's been lost for years and years. The children liked the explorers. They wanted to help them find the lost city. Maybe we can find it today, said Keeper. I don't think so, said the man. We have been looking for years. They came to a rope bridge. Maybe the lost city is over there, said Biff. Let's go and see. They began to cross the bridge. I hope it's safe, said Keeper. They found the boat on the bank of the river. The boat was full of water. The boat was full of water. Oh good, said the explorers. We lost this boat years ago. They got in the boat and paddled up the river. Look at all the alligators, said Chip. I hope it's not their dinner time. They came to a waterfall. The explorer could not stop the boat. The paddle had broken. Look out, he called. We are going to get wet. The boat went through the waterfall. Oh, help, said Nina. I don't like getting wet. Think of the alligators, said Chip. It's better than getting eaten. Behind the waterfall, there were some steps. The steps went up and up for a long way. Nobody could see how far they went. This may be the way to the lost city, said the lady. Come on! As they climbed the steps, some bats flew past them. If this is the way to the city, I can see how he got lost, said Nina. It's a, such a long way up. It's the lost city, shouted the explorers. We have found it at last. The man threw his hat in the air and his wife jumped up and down. I knew we'd find it today, said Keeper. Nobody had been in the city for years. There were plants and trees everywhere. Biff pulled the plants out of a wall. This is like the one I gave mom, she said. They went to a big building and they opened the doors. Oh look, they all gasped. Everything inside the building was made of gold. The floor was gold and the walls were gold. There were some gold steps that went up to a gold throne. What a wonderful place, said Nina. There's a gold everywhere. Keeper sat on the gold throne. A monkey jumped down behind him. Look at me, he said. Look at that monkey behind Keeper, said Biff. Which one is the monkey? asked Chip. Suddenly the key began to glow. It's time to go home, said Chip. Goodbye, said the explorers. Thank you for helping us find the lost city. I wish we had a magic key, said the man. 
The magic took the children home. Biff still had the plant she found in the lost city. I will put it in Mom's jungle, she said. I know where we can get a monkey too. The Broken Roof It was games time at school. The children were outside on the field. Anina ran up to Mrs. May. Come and see something, Mrs. May, she said. Someone had broken the fence down and dumped junk on the field. Wilf was cross. We don't want junk on our field, he said. The field isn't a dump, said Mrs. May. Then Mrs. May saw something in the junk. Do you see this? She asked the children. It's a mango. It gets the water out of the wet clothes. How does it do that? Asked Anina. Mrs. May took the mango into the classroom. She showed the children how it worked. First, she got a big sheet and made it wet. Then, Nadim turned the handle and Biff helped Mrs. May put the sheet through. The water ran out of the sheet and went into a bucket. We don't use mangoes now to get clothes dry, said Mrs. May. What do we use? Mrs. May showed the children a picture of something washing clothes a long time ago. Mrs. May asked the children if they had any old things at home. Some of the children said they had. When Biff and Chip got home from school, they looked at the little house. The house looked very old, said Chip. And so do these little children. Let's take them to school. Keeper didn't want them to take the little house to school. What about the magic? He asked Biff. The magic won't work if we don't take the key, said Biff. Some of the children took old things to school. What a lot of things, said Mrs. May. We can find out all about them and have a display. Mrs. May liked the little house and so did all the children. Biff and Chip didn't say that the house was magic. That was a secret. Wolf was being silly. He climbed on Mrs. May's table and pushed some books over. The books fell on the little house with a crash. Oh no, said Biff. One of the books made the hole in the roof. Wolf was very upset when he saw that the roof was broken. I'm sorry, he said. Perhaps I can get my dad to mend it. Biff and Chip took the house home. Keeper was cross when he saw that it was broken. He had the magic key in his hand. Will the magic still work? He asked. Just then, the key began to glow. A new adventure began. The magic took the children back in time. It took them to their house a long time ago. The house looked new, but the roof was broken. There were three children playing outside, and two men were mending the roof. Didn't our house look nice a long time ago? said Biff. But how did the roof get broken? The children saw Biff, Chip and Keeper, and they ran up to them. Hello, they said. Who are you? I'm Biff, said Biff. This is Chip and this is Keeper. What funny names, said the girl. My name is Victoria. This is Edward and this is Will. What funny clothes you have, said Will. Not as funny as yours, said Keeper. Keeper looked up at the man of the roof. How did the roof get broken? He asked. We don't know, said Edward. It was broken when we woke up. That's funny, said Keeper. A lady came out and called the children. Go inside and wash your hands, she said. 
It's time for tea. Is that your mother? Biff asked. No, said Edward. That's our cook. The children went into the kitchen. The cook looked at Biff, Chip, and Keeper. May they stay to tea? Asked Victoria. They have funny clothes, said Cook. But yes. Biff looked round the kitchen. This is not like our kitchen, she said. Cook looked at Chip's hands. Go and wash your hands, she said. You can't have tea until you do. After tea, Cook made the children wash their hands again. Then she told Edward to take some tea to the workmen. Come and see our rooms, said Edward. The broken roof was in Edward's room. Is it mended yet? He asked. It won't be long now, said the man. Thanks for the tea. The children went into Victoria's room. Victoria had a little room in her bedroom. It was the one Biff had. We keep toys in here, said Victoria. Come and look. Biff, Chip, and Keeper looked at the children's toys. Chip loved rocking horse. I wish we had a horse like this, he said. So do I, said Biff. Victoria took Biff, Chip, and Keeper into the little room. Come and see this, she said. What is it? asked Keeper. Victoria showed them a little house. She told them that her father was making it for them. It will look like this house, she said. We know, said Biff. Edward looked at Chip's watch and Chip looked at Edward's boat. Do you want to swap? asked Edward. Yes, please, said Chip. Then I can take the boat to school to show Mrs. May. Suddenly, the magic key began to glow. It's time to go, said Keeper. But I don't want to. Will you come back? asked Edward. We don't know, said Biff. Maybe. The magic took the children home. They looked at the little house. The broken roof has been mended, said Biff. How did that happen? I don't know, said Chip. Maybe Dad mended it. I think the walkman in the adventure did it, said Keeper. We saw them. I think it was magic, said Biff. I like that adventure best of all, said Biff. I liked those children long ago. I like to go back and see them again. Me too, said Chip. Looking at the boat, maybe I could get my watch back. <laughs>